language can't just be considered as a discrete subject. Language is the very foundation of culture. It's the mortar of our communities. It's the thing that binds us all together when we collectively share and communicate with one another. If we can't value the way we communicate, um, then it's very difficult for us to conceive of ourselves as a national community. From the age of five until the age of eight, every child in my primary school got elocution lessons. And it wasn't because I went to some private school, I went to a normal school, but they wanted to give us a leg up in order to be able to speak properly should we need to. But at the same time, they were undermining our culture and undermining the, the, the very fragments of what made us, us. Any silencing can only be negative. That's just an opinion of mine. And I think that what we saw during the referendum campaign and, and now in our politics, regardless of what side you came from um, in Scotland, whether you were a yes or a no vote, we are still questioning um, the standards or the, the things that we are told to believe. And one of those is language. And a part of that is stripping away some of the, the ideas of ourselves as perhaps inadequate or perhaps not good enough, perhaps not strong enough or smart enough and thinking actually this is legitimate in its own right and the languages in Scotland are legitimate in their own right. Bring it Ben, gee it Laldi, mock it, hyphen, bluttered, scunner, boggin, tolly, jobby, am I allowed to say them? A rami, that might be a Coat Bridge one, it's like a glass bottle. Um, apparently the word rami which is in, in Coat Bridge and it's to refer to the glass bottle that bars, iron brew or other drinks came in refers to a family called the Ramaprus who came from South, um, South India and moved to Coat Bridge and they used to uh, collect all the bottles in order to recycle them in Coat Bridge and now they're just called Ravis, which is, I think, an amazing little tidbit of, of Scottish linguistics. I suppose, in some respects, it's the ones that you have in your family that almost seem the most important and the most visceral. Like, there's nothing like seeing my dad and having him calling me like a, a, a silly dumpling or a numpty or something like that because it's that real connection with the community and with the local, with your family um, that really makes it a living language. And in Scotland we have a living language, whether you want to look at old Scots that, we, that t is taught in universities, which is sometimes considered quite academic, I definitely never called my language my lead. But then at the same time you've got the language that's innovated in the playgrounds, which is probably the biggest hotbed of language in Scotland. I hope that we have a future where we produce media and art in Scotland that reflects the way people sound and the way people speak. I hope we have a future where we don't have children brought up playing houses sounding like Americans, but actually use the voices of their mums and dads. They, they sound like where they come from, they sound like their locale, they're, they're situated in their context. Um, I hope that we have generations of people who enjoy and delight in the way we speak and never feel embarrassed. And I hope that I never have to say again um, to somebody when they ask why I'm incomprehensible and that perhaps I should speak proper English. I hope that I can say to them, well, I, I speak properly the way I speak and I think that that's good enough. Democracy, a system of government by the whole population or all the eligible members of a state, typically through elected representatives. Now the recent general election has kicked up once again the question of whether or not we live in a democracy in the UK and under Westminster, and realistically the answer is no, not even nearly.